Um, you were you living in Los Angeles at the time that all this happened to you? Yes. Uh -huh. Yes, I've, I've been in Los Angeles for a year, uh -huh. and I think and. And you think that's where you contracted? I think so. Mm -hmm. I got tested in February of '96 in Bakersfield, mm -hmm. and I was negative. Um, and throughout the course of the next year, I moved to Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. um, Why did you move to LA? I, my job transferred me. Oh. To Santa Monica. If that hadn't happened, would you still be in Bakersfield? Oh God, no. <laughs> that's what I thought. <laughs> I thought it was more than a, more than a job transfer that brought you here. No, it was a. It was actually I had two jobs in Bakersfield. It was actually the smaller job that needed more people in Santa Monica, and it wasn't really the best career choice for me, but mm -hmm. I thought, you know, I had the opportunity, I had a job, and I had mm -hmm. a place to live. I thought, why not, you know, it's, my, it's actually giving me a chance to move to L.A. Mm -hmm. to get out of there. Now, now, one thing I've noticed talking to you is that you seem to have a whole different attitude to being gay and coming out and all the, the, the things that go along with being gay than the older generation does, people who I'm familiar with. Um, did you, you, when you were in Bakersfield, were you openly gay in Bakersfield? Yes. Um, did you did you come out? I mean, did you do a great I, thing? I did. A <laughs> I did a great thing. Um, it was my first year of college at, at Bakersfield College, and um, I didn't think a lot of people, especially in a town like that, when they want they come out, they can become real rebellious in a way, mm -hmm. where they really want to make a statement. And I became very active in you know the gay organizations and the gay clubs and. R right away, did you? Right away, yes. I was, I was in theater at the time, and I was doing stage productions. And um, I got involved in the gay and lesbian club that they have on campus there, and I became an, um, what they call an ICC rep for the ASB board. What, the, explain what those are. That's the inter, inter club council rep. So oh. I, would, I would talk to other club council members about what our club's doing and the events mm -hmm. that we're planning and, and, and stuff like that. We would have guest speakers. I would speak on panels in front of classrooms. Really? of college students about oh. my sexual orientation. Really? So How old were you at that time? You know? I was 19. I was 19, 20. When you, when you came out, really? I, I was 19 when I came out, and I was 19, 20 when I was, and 21 when I was doing all this. Uh-huh. Why, why was it so easy for you to do that? Or was it easy for you to do that? Because Bakersfield is pretty still, I mean, it's, it's almost synonymous with, I hate to use the word redneck, but I mean, it really is. Um, even even though it's in California, it's still it's still. I pretty. think the environment in which I came out in, I had a, I had a group of friends that were real supportive. Um, I came from, I, I moved for a lot throughout the United States. I never lived in one city, so it wasn't as if I was going to lose a lifetime long friends, you know. If I lost a couple of friends I've only known a couple of months, that was okay. You know, I graduated from high school in Oregon. So to, to tell someone I was gay and to come out there, if they didn't accept it, then that was fine. I really didn't know them well enough or long enough to care. And the ones who I did know long enough accepted it. And that was the hardest part, I think, was telling some of my best friends. And yeah. they took it really well, and, and I think that's what really kind of gave me that ammunition. Now, these were friends in the, in the theater thing that, that you were yes. doing? Yes. Oh, so, so what, what I'm trying to work out is, because I can imagine a 19-year-old coming out in Bakersfield and getting all kinds of rejection and, and real, um, uh, you know, mud thrown at him, figuratively speaking, and so forth. Um, so you were already in a fairly enlightened group there. Yeah, yes, uh -huh. I was. I, and then I wrapped myself up as, with as much information as I can, um, especially concerning spirituality, which was a big concern for me, uh -huh. and, um, and other issues revolving what the controversy of gay was. And I, I learned as much as I could. So when people were asking questions, I almost thought of them as ludicrous in a way, you know. That seems to be your modus operandi, doesn't it? As soon as you're confronting a problem, whether it be how to come out um, painlessly or how to deal with HIV, the first thing you do is get lots and lots of information. Is that right? Yes, that yes. Right? That's a, um, the mistake I made when I came out gay, I think, was not telling my mother I was gay right away. I think I waited a year or two before I told her. Uh, you, when did you know? That I was gay? Uh-huh. Um, Age three. <laughs> <laughs> probably. Really? Probably. I think, you know, when you start developing your, your sexual interests and desires, I think you know, through puberty uh -huh. is when I really So you recognized knew. it immediately for what it was? For what it was, yes. Uh -huh. And I, of course, didn't practice it, and, no. I, and I preached against it. You know, I used to teach Sunday school and stuff. And 
Oh, did you really? Yeah. yeah. But, but you preached against it? Oh, yeah, definitely. It was a sin, you know. So, and I, I didn't know better. It was, so, it was something that I was um, conditioned to believe was, was wrong. So, what I'm trying to understand is that there was obviously a transition in here somewhere from the Sunday school teacher who was preaching against homosexuality because, because it was a sin, according to the Bible, to this 19-year-old who was coming out and speaking about it all over campus and, uh, and not um, really caring uh, for the people who, who rejected him. Well, I, okay, I graduated from high school when I was 17. I moved to California and I waited a year before I started college. Um, in the course of the year, I think you, I kind of maybe experimented some with, with guys, you know, and... Sexually. Sexually, yes. Mm -hmm. and, and I kept, you know, I kept feeling shame and disgust. And, oh, you did? Yes, a lot. And uh -huh. I never understood why. And the more I learned and the more I found out people my age, and that was the most important thing, is finding somebody my age who was also gay in Bakersfield. So when I found somebody my age, it was easier for me to tap into the community that was, you know, which is a large community in Bakersfield of young gay people yeah. and actually see that there's a lot of gay people there and a lot of people just like me and I felt more normal, I think, once yeah. I realized that it's not, you know, a selected phenomenon that happens just to occasional people. It actually is a wide phenomenon and it's, it's very normal. So then when you were in your innocence um, <coughs> teaching Sunday school and teaching that homosexuality was wrong, it was it was what you'd always been told, of course, and taught. Plus, it was a concept that you weren't fully informed about. Yes. You were preaching about homosexuality, the, ab the abstraction. When you got into it and did it a bit, you know what I mean, you realized that there are lots of people out there that it is. So it is that question of getting informed about it, which you did through sexual experimentation, but still, you became much more aware of the gay community there, and then much less ashamed of, of your own... Um, the more reading I did, the more studying of the actual Bible and learning, like the MCC Church here in Los Angeles. Which is Metropolitan Community Church. Yes. Yeah. By, by being more enlightened, I think, in, in the community and understanding that what the Bible really says about homosexuality and how society does change the words of not just the Bible but other literature to fit what they are believing and what yes. they believe. Yeah, they, the old saying is you can get the Bible to prove anything. Yeah, you yeah, you to. can. You can. And so, so by really digging and learning and becoming absolutely, pos totally aware of what the Bible says helped me to better combat and feel more secure in my sexuality. But wasn't that hard for you, particularly on the spiritual level? Because here you were teaching Sunday school in the usual kind of mode that, that, that Christians work in, you know, that, that homosexuality is not a good thing. And, and, and you made the transition ultimately to going to Metropolitan Community Church, which is a, which is a gay-oriented church. Um, but that transition cannot have been easy. It took three uh, years. Three years. It took three years. Okay. Um, I came out when I was 19, and I, um, I practiced sexual promiscuity. You know, I did the whole pie slew of sins that, you know, was preached to me as wrong. So I felt a lot of shame and, you know, and unchristian as, as I could. So it took, a, it took a lot of studying and it took a lot of commitment, I think, to finally go to the church and meet Reverend Nancy Wilson and talk to her. She's a wonderful one. She's the pastor. She is. She's pastor wonderful. Church, yeah. She's, and, um, and also Reverend Carlos Jones, who's a um, black, black reverend who has AIDS. Oh, really? And he's been the most tremendous support for me. He's uh -huh. been... Every Monday he would meet with me at 7 o'clock and talk to me just about HIV and spirituality and mm -hmm. the whole thing. And it was really, really a lot of support. Mm -hmm. So I was really And you still, context. you told me earlier, you still go to church regularly. So, yes. so your belief in God and your leaning on God for support all the time is as strong as it always was, maybe even stronger? I think a lot more stronger. I think when I was young and I was, and I was you know, teaching Sunday school and, then, and the whole thing, I really, really loved God and really wanted to be this great Christian, but there is still this part of me that said I couldn't, you know, because of what I, what I was conditioned to believe about my sexual orientation. Mm -hmm. But now that I have come to terms with my sexual orientation, and I know that it's okay to be gay and Christian, it makes me that much stronger to be able to lean on God and ask Him for things and to, to do to feel more like a Christian, to feel like I can do more ministry. Well, when you way. say ministry, I was going to pick up on that because 
you, you seem to have a compulsion to get out there and, and speak and spread the word. Right. Yeah, not just about you know God and the gospel because that's something that I know a lot of people, especially in the gay community, don't necessarily listen to. Uh -huh. um, but about anything really, about you know the sexual orientation, making young people feel more comfortable with who they are, about HIV and AIDS, making people aware that there's treatment opportunities, making yeah. sure, especially young people know that it's no longer such a death sentence as it used to be. Yes. We'll, we're going to do a second show. Pick up on one thing from, from the last time I talked with you. The question of coming out. Um, you, 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 we, we had a conversation before about how you came out, and you, were come, you came out in Bakersfield, and you were very um, kind of vocal and active about it all. But um, you told me, I just wanted to pick up on the thing about, about your mother. You, you said you didn't come out to your mother immediately. Was that right? Yes. Well, my mother lived in Washington State. Uh -huh. And so um, it was difficult for me to come out to her. I didn't really communicate well with her. Uh -huh. And um, two years later, I finally did tell her uh -huh. I, was, I was gay. And she was crying. She was upset. And, you know, I had to go through this whole explanation of what gay is. And it took her a long time to even accept, you know, boyfriend. You know, I said, my boyfriend. She said, he has a name. You don't have to say boyfriend. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know, uh -huh. and so that took many months to, for her to deal with. Uh -huh. And it was hard for me to deal with it because I've already accepted it. I'm living it. Yeah. It, it was just life that I was leaving, living. But didn't have to deal with it again. And my mother was a tremendous stress on me. Yeah. So when I came out HIV positive, I decided that, you know, I don't know very much about HIV. I just know the basic facts about it. I'm going to go ahead and tell my mom right away. And so we both can learn together. And that's what I told her when I told her. I go, you know, I, I got HIV. I, I got my test results today. I am positive. Um, I'm sending you some information, I told her. So don't worry. Um, I, someone told me at the clinic that it's not adjusted and that there's treatments and stuff. So we'll see what happens. At that time, I didn't know anything about protease. No. I didn't know anything about reverse transcriptase or no. anything. So I was really scared. I was crying. She was crying. You, you thought it was a death sentence. Yes, I did. I uh -huh. did. And so did she. Yeah. And I told her, we're not to worry. And I told her, we'll both go this to together. We'll both learn together. Uh -huh. And in a sense, I think that was easier for me to deal with. And what, I guess what I'm trying to say is, you know, if you have a loved one, whether it's your, your mother or your grandmother or whoever that you're really close with that makes an impact on your life, it's probably easier to go with them, go through it with them together than go through it by yourself and then eventually then finding out they'd have to go through it all over again. Mm -hmm. yes. well, uh, just as a matter of interest, how was her reaction finding out you were HIV positive as, in rec uh, as, as opposed to her finding out you were gay? Was, was it two completely different reactions? Can you remember? Um, yes, yes. Me, me coming out gay, she just kind of was just shocked. And in denial, she kept saying, no, no, no. And she, can be she couldn't be in the same room with me and stuff. Oh, really? And she was kind of in disgust, mm -hmm. I think. Mm -hmm. And probably disappointed. Yeah. Um, me coming out HIV, I think she was terrified more than she was disappointed. Uh -huh. I, think she was, um, she, I think she was more wanting to do what she can. She wanted me to move up there and live with her so she uh -huh. could take care of me. Yeah instead of pushing me away, so yeah. she was more wanting to It's interesting, take isn't it? The, mm -hmm. Because I've heard other people, the reason I ask that question is because I've heard other people say that their family could deal with them having HIV much better than they could deal with them being gay. Because HIV, that's a disease, you know, people get diseases, people get cancer and so forth, and they can, their families handle that. But finding out that their son or daughter was gay is, is a, was much harder for them to handle. Well, now let's